Okay. Um, yeah. So moving on. This is our second equation. And uh, we move to the node voltage at C. Now, assuming you're going to try to do the node voltage method at C, I mean, the, the K, writing the KCL, well, you'll run into a problem. Look, okay? You can assume current's moving up, current's moving out. You can write the delta V over R of this. But then, how are you going to write the delta V over R of this, right? You encounter our tragedy of voltage source. Why? Because, okay, you can write uh, the delta V of this uh, voltage source, which is, uh, you know, VC minus VD. But then, what's the resistance? They don't tell you, okay? So you cannot use uh, KCL directly on true the current of a, I mean, the current flowing through a voltage source. So we need to avoid it. How are we going to avoid it? We need to, we need to avoid it using uh, a super node, okay? So the bottom line is, like, in summary, whenever you need to write uh, KCL, you need to avoid you need to avoid the voltage sources. To avoid voltage sources, you need to use super nodes. Okay, so how are we gonna define our super node? So to draw a super node, you need to enclose the voltage source you're trying to avoid. So we're trying to avoid this guy, right? So we need to enclose it in a super node like this. You need to enclose also the two terminals of the voltage source. Okay, so that's how you uh, write your, that's how you draw your supernode. So now what do we do? We take a KCL using the perspective of the supernode. So we don't know this current, we don't know this current, so just assume it moves out. See, it moves out of this bubble, it moves out of this bubble. Okay. So now what can we write? We can write KCL at supernode. So who are the currents moving into the supernode? Nobody, so zero. Now, who are the currents moving out? We have Okay. We have V start minus V N. So V C minus up here is V B. Okay. V C minus V B. So V C minus V B divided by 10, which is the resistance that it goes through, plus who else? Okay, so now focus on this. V start minus V N. So V D minus negative 10. Okay, minus negative 10. So V D minus negative 10 divided by 10. Okay, then you shall simplify this. If you simplify it, da 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 da, you should get V B minus V C minus V D equals to 10. So, um, yeah, this is your third equation. Now, who is your last equation? Whenever you involve a supernode, right, do not forget that you can use the voltage source itself as an equation. What does, what does that mean? So, focus on the voltage source. Remember, the plus and minus of this voltage source means that the two ends have a difference of 10 volts. See, here, the voltage source has a has a difference, these two ends, this and this, VD and VC, they have a difference of 10 volts. And more specifically, you can say that VD, VD is higher than VC by 10 volts. Why? Because VD is connected to the plus terminal. VC is connected to the minus terminal. So the plus terminal is higher, the minus terminal is lower. So VD is higher than VC by 10 volts. Therefore, we can write okay, from the the source itself, we can say VD minus VC is equal to 10. And this is your fourth equation. Okay, so you leave it as that. And we're going to move on to the next question. So the next question wants us to do the mesh current method. So this time we do KVL. So to do KVL, you need to do, um, you need to identify the meshes first. So let us assume some directions. I'm going to assume it anti-clockwise. Yeah, don't freak out. Last time I said you can do clockwise, right? But then this time I'm going to do anti-clockwise because it follows this current source direction. Okay, it's just for convenience. But don't freak out. It will still work out correctly. Even if you assume that it is moving in a clockwise direction, it will still work out. 
Okay, don't believe me? Go ahead and try. So I assume this and I assume this. So this is IA and this is IB. Now look at this. The current source immediately tells us that IA is two amperes. You see, IA is going through this current source and the current source dictates that that branch current is two amperes. So therefore we can immediately say IA equal to two. Okay, so it's already solved for us. Then what else? Um, let us move on to KVL at mesh B. So let us start from here. If you start from here, we've had to go one round and we add up all the potential difference. So we're going to the resistor R2, right? Now, remember, we add up the potential difference. The potential difference, we're going to express it as I times R. I is the net current, R is the resistance. So for R2, the resistance is 10 ohms. That's obvious. But what is the net current? See, this one is not obvious. So as we go around like this along IB, as we pass through R2, we are going, see, IB is going in this direction, okay? It's following the red arrow, so it's following the direction we want, and IA will be opposing the direction we want. So the net current through R2 will be IB minus IA. IA is opposing us, so we have to minus away IA. So, okay, so negative, the net current, so IB minus IA, times the resistance, so 10 ohms. Now, what is this negative? This negative indicates a voltage drop because resistors always, 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 for resistors, there's always a voltage drop. So voltage drop is negative, we assign that negative. Okay, so, um, okay. After passing through this resistor, we can now move on to this resistor. As I pass through here, what is the current going through R3? It's just IB, right? You see, IB is going through R3. So, um, we just write minus, okay, minus again because it's a resistor, resistors dissipate, so it's a potential drop. Um, then we have IB times its resistance, okay? Now, after this resistor, we're gonna pass through this, we're gonna pass through this voltage source. When we pass through this voltage source, what are we doing? Sorry, um, yeah. What are we doing? When we pass through this voltage source, take a look at this. We're going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, right? We're going through the negative terminal to the positive terminal. See, negative to positive means our potential increases. There's a gain in potential. So if there's a gain in potential, we need to assign it as positive. See, positive 10 volts. Okay, now we pass through the resistor. Again, passing through resistor is a potential drop. So assign it as negative. Negative, the current is still IB. See, IB is going through R4 like that. Okay, so I'm running on space, sorry. IB times the resistance 10. Okay, now we've arrived back at the red dot that we start with. Okay, this whole thing is a node, so yes, it is the same starting point. So we've already finished our loop. So we just equate everything to zero. Oh, I'm running on space. Yeah, equate it to zero. Then you... Okay, this, this, actually, you can just leave it as this. Okay, then we move on to the next question. So, next question says, uh, using the numerical values means now you have to start substituting things. Uh, determine the, vol the voltage. So, find VA, VB, VC, VD, and then the currents. Okay, so... Wait, let's just call this equation 5, okay? Let's call this equation 5. So, how to find the no voltage values? What do we do? We just, so this is uh, question what, D? Yeah, it's question D. So question D, we just solve equation one, equation two, equation three, and equation four. We should get VA, uh, okay, the answers are 20, VB is 10, zero, you see, and VD. Okay, so we have, yeah, these are the answers. So what am I doing? Uh, to solve them means I take, uh, where are my equations? Oops, I forgot to label this as equation one. Okay, so what do I do? I just punch it all to my calculator. So I solve this, I solve this, this and this, 
put it in my calculator and then get VAVC, sorry, VAVBVCVD, and I get these numerical values. Okay. Now, 